Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use Arima Plus model uh, in Google BigQuery. Uh, this is uh, Arima Plus model you can use for uh, outlier detection and forecasting uh, in a time series data set. Uh, as you can see uh, in the Google documentation, so you, you have given like all the ex example and uh, everything that you need to know about basic concept of uh, Arima uh, uh, model uh, before we uh, go further I'm going to do a simple example uh, so that you can better get a better understanding how you can run uh, Arima plus model to detect outlier in Google BigQuery let's get started so um, uh, first of all we need to select our data set uh, so one thing you can do is you can directly run this uh, everything in Google BigQuery or you can run uh, through a uh, collab notebook as well so let me show you both way so let me copy the code um, and go to google bigquery So this is the data set that we are interested in, uh, San Francisco bike sharing uh, trip data set. Uh, as you can see, uh, you will see uh, uh, trip number, in the station, start uh, and then trip durations and then uh, trip ID and then station ID. So for Arima uh, plus model, for we are going to look at it, uh, uh, is there any outlier based on uh, each station? how many trips we have taken so that's uh, uh, the uh, for a particular days that's what uh, the uh, calculation that we are going to do uh, so basically in uh, uh, arima plus model we are going to look at it uh, for each station each day how many trip if there are outliers basically one day can have more trips that's mean it's an outlier one day can have a less trip uh, compared to the average level so let me uh, run the query to get the calculations part where we calculate the uh, trip uh, number of trip count uh, as you can see we can run this in google bigquery uh, google collab as well uh, here you can see so uh, i'm i'm going to show you i'm going to share all the code uh, in uh, uh, GitLab. So this is my setup for GitLab. So let me run and show you uh, if you wanted to run it in uh, um, in a Google Cloud Cloud Notebook. Uh, if you're running on a Colab, uh, you need to have setup like this. This is my setup for uh, if you're running on uh, uh, Code Space uh, in uh, GitLab. Uh, so if you're running on a collab, you can run like this. Uh, that would be authentication part. Uh, don't worry, guys. I'm going to share both code in uh, uh, GitHub uh, where you can download and set your project ID, and then uh, you do authentication, and also then you will be able to run similar way. So and uh, you look in the data from the data frame perspective, uh, and then uh, you do the calculations, and then uh, uh, you see the stations and number of trip and then you can look at it's uh, how many unique uh, uh, station this is just a panda operations um, okay guys so then uh, let's say you can look at the data sets uh, if you want to uh, describe the whole data sets let me start from the top uh, so here I'm creating uh, the same thing again uh, and then the number of unit stations. So model creation, this is the part where important to us guys. So you put your model location and then uh, you select the model type and then you need to give the time series uh, variable. So in this case, situation for us is the date start uh, because uh, the time series uh, column and then the data column, this is number of trip and then uh, the ID column, which is the station. Uh, we are going to give this ID and a station. So all this information you can find it from uh, um, in Google BigQuery uh, documentation. 
uh, if you go here uh, you will see uh, the link I will gonna share with you guys uh, uh, you can go and uh, look at it how the model creation section syntax uh, these are the options that you can give uh, let's say if you if you wanted to give the frequency of calculation daily or uh, uh, that you can give as well and then the holiday in says in a time series uh, uh, forecast let's say if you're forecasting something related to the uh, which uh, flight data or something like that where holiday have an impact you can define the holiday and holiday regions everything like that all the informations here I'm going to share it in a link here uh, I'm just going to do a simple example here to like create a model when you run this query uh, uh, you will start creating the model I'm not going to run it again uh, I have already created the model uh, to, uh, to save the time uh, let me show you the model This is the model that uh, I just uh, created using. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are the value uh, model uh, going to get output. Uh, if you if you do the evaluation part, uh, let me run the evaluation query here. Model evaluation. Uh, model evaluation is uh, select uh, from all Arima evaluate. Uh, there are two way to evaluate. Uh, one is uh, using the Arima model. Or other way to evaluate is you can use a normal data set as well uh, then you need to provide additional data um, uh, if you uh, go to arima evaluation model you will find it those information uh, where when you're doing the, if you want to do, use a normal model evaluation method you need to provide external data here I'm going to use the arima evaluate method in here you will get uh, a basic information uh, which is coming in Arima model um, I have given you explanations of all the variable here as well so P stand for auto uh, regressive part indicate the number of lag between the model here one mean model run a previous time for indicate so basically you one uh, one time behind the uh, current value uh, and then uh, whether it has a drift or not uh, you can uh, this information is also available don't worry you can read through everything I'm not going to read everything here uh, whether it has a drift or not is an important thing it's whether it there are linear relationship or not so let's say uh, I, I want to look at it with a linear relationship these are the ones as a linear relationship and then if you look at the variance uh, lower the variance is uh, and uh, then there's another one that I can information criteria which is uh, if you look at uh, uh, indicate uh, better the model if the highest the value uh, ah, no so the lower value indicate the uh, better model uh, you can go through all the uh, information here and then here where the season is step changes in the season and has spike or not holiday effect things like that everything will be in the evaluation section which you can go through uh, and then has a drift and then a log likelihood uh, and then the variance and things like that and then uh, the, the most important part uh, in uh, in our scenario is a uh, uh, anomaly dissection so this is the variable this is uh, how we are going to run it uh, ml dot uh, anomaly detection and then the model we are calling the model and the structure uh, and the eight 0 0.8 means 80 percent accuracy so if you run this query it will go uh, calculate the uh, eight above 80 percent probability will say uh, it has aluminium or not this value in check whether this value and if it is more than 80 percent uh, it uh, will this one this value particular column will be true uh, you as you can see this is uh, uh, here is more than 90 percent it's true uh, let me get a random sample increase the sample mm, sample of 10 uh, so can you see it's only one value is uh, if you randomly look at it it's more than 8 is true all the others going to be false let me generate another one so here you can see uh, it is uh, more true is in this and probability is uh, what you call uh, more than 80 percent if you want to change it you can change it to make it like 90 let's say run 9 and then run the model and see so then the output would be different 
So if you look at now, more than 90% only will really be true. 80% won't be true here. So you can see 99 is true. Uh, so can you see this is false now? It's more than 80%. It still is false because it's, we are looking at more than 90%. So let me make it back to 80. 80 is more than uh, good enough for us, our scenario. So then I'm looking at this uh, uh, shape. Uh, again, how many data points we have processes. And then I'm going to run through the uh, uh, select a particular station and trying to graft it. Uh, you can see, uh, and then uh, I'm converting it to take the month uh, uh, time period and the year. That's because uh, uh, if I take only one station data point, let me graph it and sh show you. Uh, this is then the station, all the station two data, and then I'm going to graph it uh, using matplotlib. Uh, you can see it is not clearly visible here. You can't see anything. Uh, so for that, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a filtering here. I'm going to select uh, uh, 2016 and um, only one month data point. Uh, let me look at that data and then I'm going to do a graph on that particular data set. So then actually you can see a proper clear graph, um, better visibility. Uh, then if you look at it, you see there are two instances uh, more than 80%. Uh, it's clearly show. So this is actually a better way to like show the information. Um, uh, this is a basic example of, uh, of Arima Plus model, how you can use this in Google BigQuery. Um, this is uh, a very simple example, guys. Uh, I'm going to share the, all the code and everything with you. Uh, just uh, try out, guys. Uh, and uh, BigQuery is very easy to do all the machine learning model using BigQuery. I'm going to do a bit more video uh, uh, on uh, how you can use Google BigQuery to do machine learning model. Uh, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, please do subscribe.